What is good, Ninja? OJ over here from Player Essence, and welcome to the PE Nintendo Switch and Gaming News video. Today, we've got a bunch of great information for you, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So, the Nintendo Switch eShop now lets you save credit card information. One complaint some Nintendo Switch users have been having about the system is that there isn't the ability to store credit card information for future purchases. Now, each time something is purchased, you've needed to re-enter all of the details. But following some maintenance tonight, this has changed. When buying a digital download, you'll now have the option to save credit card information. You'll see this information under your user profile when it's stored. Users also have the option to enable slash disable password entries for purchases when saving credit card information. Now, Nintendo appears to be improving the Nintendo Switch eShop bit by bit, making it more convenient to use, which isn't too surprising, really. I mean, last month we did see that they added a bestsellers chart. And moving into our next story here, the Nintendo Switch eShop also makes it easier to view all of the available games. So the Nintendo Switch eShop added the ability to save credit card information like we talked about here, but that was not the only change. Now in the recent releases, now features a view all button at the end of the page. Clicking on it presents all games stored from new to old. You can also set the price range, view the best sellers, and arrange things from old to new. What's interesting about this is that it's not entirely new. You could actually do it before, but the issue was that not many Switch owners knew about it. Basically, by going to the search area when clicking search filters, the same page as view all page pops up. So it may have been somewhat of a minor addition, but something that will definitely go a long way. So some people are surprised about this. They're like, oh, finally, and I've been saying this for quite some time at this point. Nintendo is going to be making additions small and small. Bit by bit, they're going to make their system better and better each month. They're not going to overload anything. They didn't want to get everything in there and stressed out and potentially have issues at launch. They wanted just to get the launch off, get the game out, get Zelda out, and let people start playing. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon race. They're going to be adding stuff in. They're going to be adding features. They're going to be making the system better and better as time goes on. And we're seeing that with the Nintendo Switch eShop. They've been adding a few things here and there. We're going to see that with the actual system when it comes to the features. They're going to be adding stuff. So yeah, to me, I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Just as long as you make it better, just as long as you give us your word that you're going to make things better and we see those results, then that's cool. And that's what's basically happened here with the Nintendo Switch eShop. So I didn't have a problem putting in my credit card information every single time. I'm one of those people who don't store my credit card information even on bills and stuff like that. I'll go in every single month and I'll pay the bill with my credit card right then and there. But that's just me. I know other people like to have their credit card information stored. That's cool that they added that and I'm glad that they're making the improvement there what do you guys think about all of these improvements as far as the view all and the eShop upgrades let me know in the comment section below all right and moving on to the next article here hyper sentinel is on the way to the nintendo switch huey games announced today the shoot 'em up will release alongside the playstation 4 xbox one and pc versions this summer now they had a new trailer for the game as well and hyper sentinel is described as a super slick ultra fast arcade shooter with an explosive pixel art aesthetic the game, which runs at 60 frames per second, has 12 levels, power-ups, and boss battles. There is also 60 medals to complete, online leaderboards, three difficulty modes, a combo chain score system, and SID style chiptune soundtracks by Fractures. So this is actually really cool. Let's see if it can dethrone Graceful Explosion Machine, because to me, that is the old school shoot 'em up style of choice on the Nintendo Switch absolutely love that game been playing a lot here and there in bits and pieces and this game does look good although i will say graceful explosion machine was an exclusive for the nintendo switch at least time at the beginning so it was really tuned for the system at least let's see what this game can do now that it's actually launching alongside everything is it really going to have that flair that graceful explosion machine has and even if it doesn't it probably have its own unique style and grace to it as far as what it's doing so i do feel that the more of these old school games that we can get i think are fantastic for the nintendo switch in particular because of the style of the system you can play it portably lying down in bed and i think these are the type of games that i used to play when i was a kid all the time like the gradius you know i used to play that so much as a kid on the super nintendo um i've played so many versions of that game i know i played on pc or something like that but super nintendo is where i really played gradius so much so i love these style of games and i like playing them you know just casually here and there in bits and pieces 
So let's hope this game is good, and I think it's looking all right from the beginning. Huey Games has been really responsive on their YouTube page, so if you have a question for them, or if you want to ask them anything, go on their YouTube page, comment on one of their videos there, and they'll, they'll respond to you, because they've been really nice to all the people making comments. So let me know what you guys think about this game in the comment section below. Hyper Sentinel for the Nintendo Switch and other systems as well. It's coming out this summer. All right, I'll move on to the last article here in the main topic of the discussion. Tatsumi Kimishima is cautious about selling 10 million Nintendo Switch units this fiscal year, and third party asks for big games quickly. We got a lot to talk about that. So let's get into the article here. So Nintendo has set a target of moving 10 million Nintendo Switch units this coming fiscal year. However, Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima is being cautious about the goal. Nikki quotes Kimishima as saying, I don't think we can readily achieve the target of selling 10 million consoles. Nikkei's piece also has one other noteworthy excerpt, and the site reports that an executive at one software company said Nintendo asked it to introduce major releases as early as possible. So who might that third party publisher be? So that's really interesting as far as Nintendo asking someone else as far as big third parties release as soon as possible. As soon as possible can easily be within the first year or as soon as possible can easily be three, four months down the line. Now I think who this company is that Nintendo asked this was Capcom. Nintendo and Capcom worked very closely on the Nintendo Switch when it came to the RAM of the system. Capcom suggested that they put more in and Nintendo obliged. So why would Nintendo oblige to that? It's something as big as how much RAM, that's how much the system is going to cost, manufacturing, everything like that, and then say, okay, well, thank you, bye. No, they probably said, well, hey, how fast can you bring something? Since you're telling us to increase the round amount, how fast can you bring something to this system? We want your AAA game that's going to work for our audience. So that's the big thing. People are hung up on Western third-party support and, oh, this game should come, this game should come. Well, no, what should really come first and foremost, as far as probably what Nintendo asked for, a Japanese company is easily a Japanese game or a Japanese company's game, maybe Square Enix. Capcom, Kobe Tecmo, but my bet, if I was a betting man, which I used to be, check out my podcast, Players Cross Nintendo, you'll see about my betting and flipping habits, or gambling habits at times, nothing crazy, but just high school stuff, but yes, if I was, then I would definitely bet that it was Capcom, because Capcom, like I said, has that relationship with Nintendo, and Nintendo and Capcom have already jointly talked about these things readily. Like, this has already been said that Capcom and Nintendo had these discussions, and they went out there and they said, hey, this is what we're going to do, and working together, the RE, or Resident Evil engine, is being ported over to the Nintendo Switch, so I would think that there's going to be some big game in the lines of Capcom when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. Now, what could that be if Capcom is that company? I would think it's going to be Resident Evil 7. Maybe we get Resident Evil 4, 5, and 7. Maybe we get a variety of different Resident Evil games. But I would think that would probably be the best fit for what Nintendo fans are going to buy. Because you have to look at it this way. Some people have been talking about third-party support and how much is going to be on it and the lack thereof or games or anything like that. And let's just put it out there first and foremost, guys. Nintendo Switch is not only just selling just because of dedicated fans. It's selling because of concept and because of big games that it has. As far as first-party Nintendo games and consistent smaller releases in between. Look, I know everyone's buying it for Zelda and Mario Kart and the big games that are coming, but the indie titles and the smaller games like NBA Playgrounds or like Thumper or like Fast RMX, Shovel Knight, those really help as far as push people along and get people in between the bigger releases. So I do feel that a lot of these third-party companies are playing a waiting game as well, but it's a good idea because Nintendo is selling a lot with their first-party titles. Whereas with the Wii U, you looked at that system and yeah, they had a lot of third party titles at the beginning and there was too many. A lot of people didn't buy those titles and third party developers got upset. Whether they were high quality ports or not, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to them in their eyes. They're only seeing green, the money. So that's the different thing with the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo really had to take the system on their own and say, we're going to sell this system and then ask certain third party developers, hey, can you bring some content like Square Enix with I Am Setsuna, Street Fighter, we got coming up pretty soon here. NIS, we do have Disgaea 5, so I'm pretty sure it was Capcom and maybe they said, hey, Street Fighter's one of them, we'll get Resident Evil out later, but I think E3 is going to be so big for Nintendo, that is going to be one of the biggest and one of the most anticipated E3s in quite some time because the Wii U era was just marred disappointment for many people, whereas the Nintendo Switch era is starting out so hot, remember, by the time E3 2013 rolled around, the Wii U was already in trouble in a lot of people's eyes. 
So it was just kind of down. Whereas this year's E3, there's momentum, there's excitement with a brand new platform, Nintendo's selling a lot. So I think it's going to be very different. The atmosphere, the tone, the mood of what Nintendo does at this year's E3 is going to be so different from what they did before. Seriously, like in years. I mean, 2014 was great, obviously, but people still said, oh, well, Wii U's still not selling. So it's been a while since Nintendo has had a really popular console as far as home consoles go that's selling a lot and people are super super excited about 3ds obviously excitement but it was marred by the wii u of course for the most of its life period so i think this is different this time nintendo has two successful platforms going into e3 with nintendo 3ds and now with the nintendo switch so we'll see what happens i am really excited for e3 i think there's going to be a lot of japanese third-party announcements a few western third-party announcements as well and i think nintendo's asking a lot of developers hey you see what's happening with nintendo switch it's time to get going, and a lot of them are obliging, like Koei Tecmo, Legend Support, Square Enix, Project Octopath. It's probably going to be a big game showing off at E3, so can't wait to see more and see what Nintendo does with the Nintendo Switch going forward in the future. Let me know what you guys think about all this information in the comment section below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. Please make sure you check out the link in the description below. There we have our link to our Patreon page, which I will be raffling away. This amazing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Amiibo. You could enter any tier and get entries into this. We are giving this away on May 31st. We also have a ton of other perks and awesome surprises for all of our Patreon members. So please make sure you check out the link in the description below. Sign up. Some great stuff. And we have PE Arena, PE Live going down tomorrow as well. This Wednesday, probably going to have some Mario Kart 8. So it's going to be really fun. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button if you did like it. Let's you know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future. And subscribe to Player Essence for the latest news, reviews, discussions, and more. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you, Ninja, for the next video. Peace.